Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is a joy to hear all the conversations going on around this room as we set to get started. Welcome to worship at Smyrna First United Methodist Church. Welcome to Common Foundation, where we are diverse in who we are, but united by whose we are. We're excited that you are joining us. If you're online with us this morning, thank you for being with us. We believe and know the same Holy Spirit that is with us in this room is with you wherever you are watching this. So thank you for giving us the honor of worshiping together this morning. If, if it's your first time here, thank you for joining us. We hope that you experience the hospitality and joy of the Holy Spirit as we celebrate uh, two sa our two sacraments this morning. We're going to have our sacrament of baptism later and also the sacrament of Holy Communion couple of announcements just for you guys to be aware of. Out in the Welcome Center, we are selling Love Makes the World Go Round tickets. It's an annual dinner theater show for a fundraiser for God's Light's Choir Tour. We'd love for you to join us as we talk about being lucky and love. That would be an amazing show for you to come and check out. And also, there are a lot of just really cool things coming up. If you could save the date in your bulletin, there's the eyewitness service. There's some other Easter services, Monday, Thursday, things like that we'd love for you to be a part of all the things as we go towards Easter. Easter is a little bit early this year. I know it kind of jumped up on us, but we would love for you to be a part of all of that. I'd love to invite our acolyte up now to light our candles. We, we come together today to worship and to know that Jesus is the light of the world. And so we light these candles to remember that. We light these candles so that we can always focus on not only worshiping Christ as the light of the world, but also remembering that he called us the light of the world, and so we leave this place after worship to be that light, and these candles are a reminder of that. It's an essential part of our faith to remember that Jesus is the light of the world. So now I'd love to invite you to please stand as we affirm our faith as it's found in the Apostles' Creed together. This is also an essential part of our faith to declare to the world and remind ourselves what it is that we believe. And so I ask you, Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to please greet one another with signs of grace, reconciliation, and love. Darkest night, 
that song. Y'all lead us well. You may be seated. Before we go to God in prayer, we are excited to invite a family into membership today. We want to invite the Towton family forward. It is Madison, Evan, and little baby Everett. It is always a joy to add to the family of Christ and to add to our Smyrna First family. They are a part of our new Hive group. This is a group of parents who have anywhere from babies all the way through elementary school kids. So we hope that if you are in that demographic, you will join that group as well. Just a couple of questions for you. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and put your whole trust in his grace? Yes. And do you vow to give of your prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness, and Bible reading to God in Smyrna first? Yes, and do you as Christ's body of the church affirm that you will walk alongside them as they seek to fulfill these vows as they've just said them before you? If so, say we do. Well, welcome. If you'll give them a hand and welcome them in. As we prepare to go to God in prayer, I want to point out the cards that are in the seats in front of you. Those are ways that you can connect with us. You can let us know that you want to join or that you want to be baptized or that you're interested in being a part of a group or that you just need to be prayed for. We want to be connecting with you and covering you in prayer and making sure that we are one big family. And so if you'd fill those out and put them in the offering plate during the offertory, that would be amazing. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you today grateful for the day that is before us. We know that today is a day in which we get to experience your grace and your love and all that you have. God, we thank you for the sacraments of Holy Communion and Holy Baptism that remind us that we belong to you, God, and that our worth is found in you and your name and your glory. 
God, that we get to grow our family. God, we thank you for the joy of membership and what it means to be a family united through you, God. We lift up all those on the prayer list today, God, and those in our hearts. God, there has been a lot of heaviness, a lot of heartbreak, and a lot of things that we just feel like we are trudging through the mud. And God, in this darkness, we know that you are there, but we ask that you bring comfort and peace and hope in the midst of our great suffering, God. In the midst of the darkness, we hope that you show us the light. And we thank you for the gentle nudges that you give us, the taps on the shoulders to tell us to look up and look around, the taps that show us that we should move forward. God, we thank you for those. We are listening. God, we thank you for Smyrna First United Methodist Church and all who are here and all who are online and all who we have yet to meet. God, we are blessed by everyone. And we thank you for bringing these people to us, God. We ask that you continue to lead us and guide us in your will and your vision. That as we grow and as we move, that all that we do is done in your love. We pray today, God, the prayer that you taught your disciples long ago. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And this time the kids will come forward for the children's moment. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready for a great Sunday? Yeah. Before we get to the box, I heard it's someone's birthday. Did you know it's someone's birthday today? <gasps> That's right. It's Miss Esty's birthday. <gasps> Can we wish her a happy birthday? <laughs> Can we sing to her? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting your cast off tomorrow? Yeah. That's amazing. And, and, and at 11 o'clock, we're celebrating our children's worship milestones. Today is such an exciting day. We're going to have the kids at 11 o'clock lead us in the Lord's Prayer and in the whole <laughs> worship service. And those are things that Miss Esty and Miss Marie are helping y'all learn. Now, what do we think's in the box? You've been trying to guess? Me too. Ooh, there's three things. It's bread and mermaid and a bunny. It's bread <laughs> and a mermaid and a bunny. All right. <laughs> and they're all made out of wood. <laughs> yes. Let's see. So the bread. You eat with it. That's right. And did you know that today we're eating bread together? that we're coming to the table together at Holy Communion. And Holy Communion is a way in which we receive God's love and God's grace, and that we learn that our worth is Why in there's a God. On the back. Yeah, there is a magnet spot on the back. <laughs> and we, we come to the table together, and coming to the 
table together means that we are all connected to one another through God and that we get to share in God's meal as a family. And, well, this bunny makes me think about Easter, which makes me think about how Jesus is the bread of life that sustains us and nourishes us. It's Hoppy. He's, he's, uh, he rose from the dead on Easter. That's right. Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, and that's called resurrection. And we are in the season called Lent where we are looking towards Easter and Jesus' resurrection. Now the mermaid. <laughs> Pink green. Her name is Pink Green. Well, you know, there's a mermaid in Disney movies, and her name is Ariel, and she loses her voice for a little while. That's right, because someone stole her voice. Well, Ursula, yeah, Ursula stole her voice. And yeah, she turned it she turned into human legs. And you know, this reminds us that there's really no one who can take our voice away. You know, Ursula might have been able to take Ariel's voice away. But when we have faith in God and we come to the table together, we know that we can speak the good news. <laughs> so no one can take our voice away because we have the power to speak the good news of how much God loves us and what it means that Jesus died and rose again for us. And that is all good news. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for bread. We thank you for Christ. We thank you for Easter, we thank you for Easter and for what it means, what it means for, our for our lives. Help us to use our voice, us to, use our voice to, speak to speak the good news. In your name we pray. Name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, here's your bread, bunny, and mermaid. <laughs> and I saw you raise your hand first. So there you go. Parents, the children will be brought back into worship today as we celebrate Holy Communion together. We want to make sure that your kids are able to come to the table with you and that you can come together. And so at the end of worship towards communion, the kids will be brought back into the front row and you can pick them up as you come forward to receive. Have fun in Children's Church. I hope you all celebrate Miss Esty and thank her for all of her hard work. As the kids head off to Children's Church, we are reminded that giving is a part of who we are in Christ Jesus. It's how we say thank you for all that God is doing in our lives and in the life of Smyrna First. If the ushers will please come forward. Jordan, you can... Do you remember this old chorus? It goes... I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in worship. up on that song. Sarah and I were just talking about that, just learning the harmonies as a kiddo. I just love that. I, I hope that was part of your story. If not, make it part of your story now. Let this be a chorus that, that sticks with you. Sing it with me again. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to soul rejoice take 
joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Take joy, my King. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet, may it be, may it be a sweet, sweet, may it be, may it be. God, we lift these tithes and offerings up to you. We ask that you bless the gift and the giver. May they be used for works of discipleship to bring your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I just love that chorus. Will you stand as we continue to worship? Trusting in the Lord, singing songs about trusting him and knowing he's here. Thank you, Lord. your heart be encouraged this morning. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time born of His Spirit and washed in His and what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. My Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. 
members of that, that, that uh, just crying out to the Lord, knowing that he's there, knowing he's with us. Praise you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. Stirs up your faith. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Something isn't adding up This wild exchange you offer us I gave my worst, you gave your blood Seems hard to believe You're telling me you chose the cross You're telling me I'm worth that much if that's the measure of your love, how else would I see? But completely, deeply, sold out, sincerely abandoned. I'm completely, freely, hands to the ceiling in ever. In my one life endeavor. To match your surrender To mirror none my will be yours I'm completely, deeply Don't care who sees me abandoned Oh, I surrender all I just can't get over it What kind of self-control is this? You had angels at your fingertips But on the cross you remain I can't repay this kind of love But I can praise with everything I got since death had all its power off And just like the grave I'm completely, deeply Sold out, sincerely abandoned I'm completely, freely Hands to the ceiling and never In my one life and ever Match your surrender to mirror not my will be yours. I'm completely, deeply, don't care who sees me abandoned. Oh, I surrender. Oh, I surrender. Oh, oh I Each phase of my life, each breath in my lungs, consider it yours, Lord. Consider it yours, Lord. The failures I hide, the victories I don't, the battles I fight, each crown that I hoard, consider it yours, Lord. Consider it yours, Lord All the glory forever The grave that you won The praise of the heavens The kingdom to come Consider it yours, Lord Consider it yours I'm completely, deeply Sold out since I'm completely, freely, hands to the ceiling in heaven. And my one life endeavor to match your surrender, to mirror not my will be yours. I'm completely, deeply. 
Don't care who sees me abandoned. Oh, I surrender. Oh. I'll sing that chorus for one more, one more time. I'm completely, deeply, sold out, sincerely abandoned. I'm completely, freely, hands to the ceiling, enamored. In my one life endeavor to match your surrender, to mirror my will be yours. I'm completely, deeply, don't care who sees me abandoned. Oh, I surrender. Oh, oh I surrender. Oh, I surrender. Oh, amen. eyewitness of Jesus sermon series. Uh, the eyewitness is found in the Gospel of Mark, and so we are encouraging and inviting uh, you to be sharing your witness. Uh, we're going to be lining folks up every week to share the witness, and today we've got Mr. Nick Tullett, uh, who's already shared at 845, and then he's going to come and share now at 9, and then when he gets done sharing, um, we're going to be baptized, Mr. Tullett. That's right. And so uh, it's a great day. morning. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not used to speaking about personal things in public, so just kind of bear with me as, as, I, as I go through this. Um, so I grew up with, without a church home. Um, I love my parents dearly, and they are Christians, they have faith, but they were denominationally very divided. My dad was Seventh-day Adventist, and my mom was Southern Baptist, and they could not agree on a lot. They were very different in how they felt that um, our family should uh, be a part of a church, so we really weren't. Um, as a child, I did not regularly attend Sunday morning services, um, or Saturday morning services for that matter. But um, <laughs> So I grew up having never been a member of a church. And, um, you know, that was um, not something that seemed that foreign to me because I really didn't know that much of a difference. Um, so when, when I was a kid, I would spend summers with my grandmother, and she was uh, a very devout Christian lady. She would take me to church. She would have me memorize scripture and uh, Bible verses, and we really um, sort of laid a foundation for me there. She was, uh, she was my rock, and she kind of laid out for, it, for me what it meant to be a Christian. Um, but again, you know, no church home um, on a regular basis. So when I was in middle school, some friends of mine who attended the United Methodist Church uh, in our hometown invited me to youth group, and I started attending youth group, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I learned a lot about God. I think that's where I really found God um, was in those years, and uh, I, I attended on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, and that's uh, my parents picked me up, dropped me off, all that, and um I was uh, really understood what it meant to be part of a community, the fellowship that came along with church and everything that church really did have to offer. Um, and I'm so glad that they did that because it, it helped me really understand what it means to be a Christian. Um, I was on a youth retreat in early high school, and a, uh, one of the topics of discussion came up, and it was, let's all share the story of our baptisms. And everyone went around the room and it got to me, and I was like, oh, this is awkward. Um, so I, I didn't really have anything to say, um, and I, I, I just I didn't know. Um, so I went home and I asked my parents. I was like, did y'all ever have me baptized? And they said, no, we didn't. Uh, we couldn't. It's one of the things they couldn't agree on. So we, uh, they said, we wanted you to make that choice when you were ready and when it was time. And, um, you know, I'm thankful for that now because it really allowed me to do that on my own terms, when I felt my true connection to God, 
And here I am today, so um, as Derek mentioned, I'll be getting baptized at the end of this service. So, um, you know, we moved to Smyrna about seven years ago, and uh, we were uh, expecting our first child, and uh, once she was born, we knew we wanted to raise our family with a church home, and we wanted them to know what it means to have a home away from your home, where you can fellowship, where you can have community, and uh, where you can have like, like-minded, not like-minded people, but people who enjoy the same beliefs you do. So uh, we joined Smyrna First five or six years ago. Um, we started attending regularly. We, we joined a small group and made some really strong connections with the people in our small group. Um, we had our son Garrett baptized here. Um, and then, you know, we, we just continued to pursue uh, more and more with, with this community and this congregation. And through that, I noticed a real change in my life and, and our family's life. Uh, started praying more, started uh, praying out loud. For those of you who have never done that, I, I highly recommend it. It seems a little weird at first, but once you do it, it's a totally different experience. And, uh, you know, you might think I'm crazy if somebody walked in and heard me. But um, anyway, we started, uh, you know, doing a daily devotional, started giving more. And I saw the difference that made in my life. It, it made me a better person. It made me think more about my actions and how I portrayed myself. Um, and it drew me closer to God. So every year at the beginning of the year, I don't exactly make New Year's resolutions, but I make goals for myself and things I want to accomplish. And one of the things I put on the list this year was I need to get baptized. I know I do. Um, so it was the second Sunday of, of this year, early January, you may remember um, it was actually Baptism Sunday. Remember your Baptism Sunday. And uh, I actually wasn't planning on coming. I didn't know that's what the sermon was going to be. Um, Ellen and Annabelle were going to come, and Garrett and I were going to stay home. And I was like, hey, buddy, you want to stay home with me, and we'll just hang out and go grab something to eat? And he's like, Daddy, we need to go to church. I was like, no. Okay, all right, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and we get here, and it's Remember Your Baptism Sunday. So, uh, you know, didn't know that was coming, and if that's not a sign from God that... Uh, it's time to do this, then I don't know what would be. So, um, you know, here I am today, um, ready to make, make, that, uh, make that commitment. Um, I've never felt closer to God in my life than I do now. And um, I'm ready to go deeper in my faith, and that's why I've chosen to get baptized today, and that's why, I, uh, after speaking with Reverend Porter, it became apparent that I needed to tell my story today. So um, I'd like to thank the... Uh, the clergy and the staff here at the church and this congregation for welcoming us when we, when we first came here and welcoming us every Sunday, um, Wednesdays, you know, anytime we're around. It, it really does mean a lot to us to have truly found a church home, which is something I've never had. So thank you. Thank you very much. Right now. Okay. Yeah. Right now. So if the clergy will come get in place with us. Can I take my shoes off? It's, I would. <laughs> We've got some liturgy that we're going to do um, that um, Reverend Davis, I believe, will. No, I'm, actually, I'm heading, I'm starting us off. <laughs> yes, yes. You got, you got time. We've got liturgy. That's the great thing about liturgy. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody be texting Esty to let them know that Ellen's coming to get the kids? We got it. We're, all, they know you're coming. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. We present Nick Tullock for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Absolutely do. <laughs> and to you as Christ's body, the church, we affirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. 
Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Nick Tulloch now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Nick with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. So while we're making you uncomfortable talking about witnessing, because this is the, the United Methodist, when, when you look at studies, Barna Research, when you ask United Methodist, what makes you the most stressed out? It's talking about your faith. Now, I'm not fixing to pass a microphone around and make you nervous that way, but I do want to make you a little bit nervous. If you'll please rise, and we're going to pray for the Holy Spirit over this water. And you don't have to do this, but I want to invite you to lift your hand. I know this is going to feel Baptist or Pentecostal for some of you, but I promise you, <laughs> it's still part of our faith tradition as well. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Nick who receives it to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. Amen. Amen. Nick, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you promise to put all your trust in his grace and serve him all of your days? I do. Let's go. I suggest stepping in here. It should be pretty warm. No, we put hot water in here today, I promise. It's not real warm. It's not real warm? Not real warm. <laughs> I tried. We didn't put enough hot water in here. It's okay. That's it. Thank you. So go down to your knees, and then we're going to catch you as you're going to fall. You're going to come back. And we're going to try not to keep you under. Okay. You can kick your legs if you want. There you go. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that all of your days that you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for your commitment to Christ. Thank you for your name and your husband. Thank you. You got it. It's for you. Thank you. You're good. <laughs> Make sure you don't fall. I'm good. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. That was one more time. Thank you, guys. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. So while you're standing, let's do the gospel. How about that? From the Gospel of St. Mark. Immediately. Immediately. So when you see the words immediately, something has happened. All right? Here's what's happened. Immediately before this, Jesus has fed the 5,000. That's what's immediately before it. I don't need to tell you the story of the 5,000, right? immediately before the feeding of the 5,000 has occurred. So that's going to come up in the last verse of this text. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and Jesus was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning. Walking on the sea, he intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves, and so now here we are from the immediately, but their hearts were hardened. These are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So we are in week three of the eyewitnesses of Jesus. 
the eyewitness account of, from, from Mark John, John Mark, coming from St. Peter, telling the stories of Jesus, telling the stories of what he did, of, of what he said, and, and the power that that had in sharing faith, the power that had in exploding the gospel, the power that had in, in people telling other people what Jesus has done. How great is it going to be that the kids watch their dad get baptized and, and how that's going to be formative for them and, and sharing for them, that that's going to be part of their witness and part of their story and part of what matters and helps shape them. Part of the struggle that we have today is we have internalized our faith so much that talking about our faith gives us hives. Amen? Amen. Talking about our faith is something that we're not supposed to do. And yet, Mark tells us so emphatically, sharing our faith is crucial. Learning to share about our faith is crucial for our own faith development, but also for the faith development of those around us. And so as we, as we look at Mark, as we think about this text, as we, as we walk into it, I want you to be thinking about witnessing. I witnessed something, one of my favorite moments in worship in a long time last week. Reverend Davis was doing the children's message at 11. Reverend Davis loves pointing out to me how old I am. It is one of her favorite pastimes. She and Jesse have this great, I'll ask them if they've seen Tombstone, and they'll go, huh? I'll make a reference from the 80s and 90s, and they'll make sure that I know they weren't alive yet. It's, it's beautiful. It's really, it's really wonderful. Um, last week, Reverend Davis used Mr. Rogers in her children's sermon and called out Mr. Rogers, and the kids all went, who? Who? <laughs> I thought I was going to cry, I was so happy. <laughs> and so we were joking about it on a staff text that we have, and Esty said, those kids are savage. I mean, it was beautiful, and it was wonderful, and ever since then, we had been thinking about that and playing about that, and, and I, we know that, that some of your favorite moments are when the kids speak in children's message, and the children's moment, and the box come in, and you have these beautiful conversations and these beautiful moments of honesty with that box and with these kids, and we've been thinking about the kids and, and how we want to disciple them and how we want their witnesses to develop. And so here's, the, here's probably, I don't know, the latest Smyrna First swag. Smyrna First United Methodist Church, savages for Jesus. Savages for Jesus. Um, the definition that we're working off there is forces of nature. Jesus was a force of nature. Now, he was the divine force of nature, but also a force of nature that we're going to talk about here. When we see this text, and actually, before I do that, let me, let's talk about soundtrack. Let me... Um, let me, let me do this for a minute. Just dance with me for a minute. Deep down in Louisiana, close to New Orleans, way back up in the woods, among the evergreens, stood a log cabin made of earth and wood, lived a country boy named Johnny B. Good, who never ever learned to read or write so well, but he could play a guitar like a ring and a bell. That song, depending on where you're from and, 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 the, and the cultural milieu that you lived in, is who you think wrote that song. I, I was probably in my late teens before I realized Elvis didn't write it. You, you learn about that song. I have friends that when I went to high school with who were convinced that that song was written for Back to the Future and the Under the Sea dance. <laughs> Are you there? Are you with me? Songs have this ability to take us, to, to, to bring us to a place, to, to grab us to a place. It reminds us, some of you in the room were thinking about when you were in high school and you heard that song, or when you were in college, or when you were a kid. One, two, three. Turn it up. Big wheel. Keep on turning. I didn't even need to do it, did I? Carry me home to see my kin. Singing songs about the Southland. I miss Alabama once again. I think it's a sin. There are songs that take us to rooms. 
There are songs that take us to seasons in our lives. There are songs that take us to relationships. There are songs that take us to good times. There are songs that take us to bad times. And some of them are generational. Some of them are songs that connect you to each other because you knew it and you sang it together. You did it together. You were at the dance together. You were... You were hanging out together, and some songs bring us to the place. And so let me talk to my 80s kids from MTV. You've never done this song in church. (laughs) Welcome to the jungle. (laughs) We got fun and games. We got everything you want. Honey, we know the names. Remember when MTV first came out and it was music and you can go right back to there and sitting and rushing home from TV because you wanted to see your favorite v- VJ, is that what it was called? You wanted to see and you wanted to hear and because you didn't have this thing called iPhones and you didn't have the ability to hear music instantly and you wanted to get it so you could see it and hear it so that you could talk and then you'd call your friend or you would go run outside because it was so important. You can remember where you're at the first time you heard it. You can remember where you were at the first time you were at a dance and it came on. The first time you were at a ball game. You can remember these songs. They bring us back. Teach me how to Dougie. <laughs> Teach me how to Dougie. Now, these lyrics are horrible. <laughs> when people talk to me about the songs of our kids' generation and how bad they are, I was like, really? Let me take you back to the 80s for a little bit. Pour some sugar on me. <laughs> Are you with me? (laughs) Hey, teach me how to, yeah. These songs, they take us to places. These songs, they remind us. And these songs are the soundtracks of our lives. All right, so can the preacher walk in now? And, and, And I know these songs, and I sing these songs, and I have them. And so hear me, this is not me judging. This is me recognizing we walk together. When the storms start, When the wind starts blowing, how many of them hold us together? They take us to a place, but there's a difference between them taking us to a place and them getting us through a place. There's a difference in them reminding us of something and them teaching us something. And so we are part of a culture, we're part of a time where we are told that just because something has history or just because something has a memory, that it has depth. Jesus has just fed 5,000 people. He's just fed 5,000 people. Well, you know, plus women and children. So who knows how many? It had to be this amazing moment. And he's tired and he wants to get on a boat. And he wants to get away. And so he gets all the disciples and puts them on the boat and they're going away and then he gets them out and gets away from them. And he, those he gets on the land. And while he's on the land and they're on the boat, a storm comes up. And it's a huge storm. And the wind is blowing and the rain is coming down sideways. It's a huge storm. And Jesus hears them. He hears them crying. He hears and he sees the storm. And so usually this is where we focus on this text, right? He goes walking on water. And what does that mean? Did he really walk on water? And what did it mean that he walked on water? He walks on the water. He walks on the water. And you remember what it said he was going to do when he heard them crying? He was going to pass them by. Do you know what you call that? Savage. (laughs) He was going to pass them by, not because he didn't care about them. He is the son of God. He was there when Jesus, when when God topped the mountains and told the oceans where to stop, the stars where to twinkle. He was there from the very beginning. He is the son of God. He adores everyone in this room. He wasn't passing by them for lack of concern from them. He was passing by so that they would understand the word Shekinah, the glory of God. Because we think that Jesus has to come immediately to us to save us. We think that Jesus has to immediately come and answer it the way that we want to. And that's not how it works. The way that it works is that we see Jesus and we go, oh my. We see Jesus and go, that, wow. 
We see God. We see Jesus at work. And we go, that's exactly what I need. Jesus passes us by. And in that passing by, we are reminded from Moses and Exodus when God was passing by the Israelites. And they said, what? And Moses said, well, he said to Moses, tell him, I am who I am. This is the Jesus moment saying, I am who I am. And in this, you see this and you recognize this and you hear this and go, this is who God is. This is how awesome Jesus is. There are moments in your life where if you are rooted in a soundtrack of love and rooted in a soundtrack of faith and depth, that you see them more clearly. And some of the songs, you can do what I just did. You don't have to sing. And you know them. We do them every week. These songs that are now spoken. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We do them every week for a reason. We do the affirmation of faith that wasn't a song, but you can sing it. We, we do these and we root ourselves in these, in these faith words. We root ourselves in these scriptures. We root ourselves in these realities. We root ourselves so that when the storms start, we are planted in something of depth. We are planted in something of meaning. We are planted in something of strength and purpose. Because that we know that when the storm starts, it will never be us that makes it start, stop. But we can see God. We can see the glory of God. We can see the strength and the peace and the wonder of Jesus. And it can help the storm stop. Yesterday, we had a service for Brett. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Zach, it was, it was beautiful. But my favorite moment didn't happen in the room. My favorite moment happened in the narthex. And at first, it was a rough moment for me. I was standing in the narthex, and these ladies, all in their 70s and 80s, start walking towards me. And you know what they did? They walked right past me. They passed me right by. And they went to Reverend Hale. And they began to hug her and kiss her and cry with her and hold her. See, because what has happened over the past couple years is there's a group of widows, all in their 70s and 80s, who meet together to care for one another, to love one another. And when one of theirs was getting ready to bury her 52-year-old son yesterday, she was not going to be alone. She was going to be with her family, church, and home. You know what you see when you see that? That is the glory of the Lord. But for those ladies in their 70s and 80s, you tell me something, you're going to see more savage this week. It was also my day to go to the hospital yesterday. I went up to St. Joe's to visit one of ours, and he's watching right now. He got news that you don't want to get. They said things to him like palliative care is next. Palliative care, you know what I mean? It's not what he wanted. It's not what any of us wanted, but here we are. And I asked him that preacher question that you never want to get asked. How is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? And in between tears and hurt and crying, he said to me, let me show you the text messages. Let me show you the phone calls and the emails from my church family that's holding me together. He said, I, I'm not ready, but I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. And as he laid in that hospital bed, knowing he'll never go back to his home again, he wasn't hopeless. You tell me something more savage, more stand in the face of fear and believe, surrounded by church family and hope. I sat with a lady in her 90s yesterday she fell and broke her hip. She's had a rough couple of years. Had to have that surgery a little while back with the cement in your back. She looked at me and told me she was getting ready to get after her nutritionist because her nutritionist wasn't helping her get her appetite back. And she was ready to get her appetite back so that she could get home and get busy doing God's work again. And then the physical therapist walked in and she said, this is my physical terrorist right here. <laughs> 
she's going to wear me out. You tell me what's more savage than that. See, I don't want to teach these kids how to be polite. I don't want to teach them how to behave. I want to teach them to follow the savage God that we adore and love, the savage Jesus that is a force of nature that has this strength and this power and love literally to change us into people of hope when there is no hope. To change us in people of love, in the middle of anger, in the middle of sadness. Did you catch that part? They missed it because their hearts were hardened. How is it with your heart? How is it with your soul? Because I can tell you there are people on that boat that didn't like the fish. They didn't want it grilled. They wanted it fried. It was a little too spicy. There were folks who were mad because other folks got more than they got. I mean, they got enough, but there were still some others who got more than they got, and so their hearts weren't right. Let me tell you, God is on the move. And if we don't experience him, it's not because God ain't God, it's because we ain't. Our hearts are hard. Part of having a witness and learning and understanding your witness and developing a witness is opening your heart to God and the amazing, wonderful, beautiful things that he's doing all around us. And then committing to be part of a community, a faith community that wants to love one another no matter what. That wants to care for one another, to teach one another, to hold one another. Whether the storms are raging, whether the sun is shining, you want nothing more but then to be with one another. And that's church. When Jesus was getting ready to fully enter into the divine, when he was getting ready to face the cross, when he was getting ready to face the execution, he went and got his best friends, he went and got his disciples. Those hard-hearted folks in the boat, he didn't give up on them. He went and grabbed them and pulled them together and sat down and said, one of you is going to doubt me. One of you is going to deny me. One of you is going to betray me. But you're still mine. And not only am I going to feed you, I'm going to wash your feet. You tell me what's more savage. What's more powerful and amazing? As we get ready to come to this table, as we get ready to celebrate the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper, no matter where you're sitting at, you're welcome at this table. This is God's table. This is the Lord's table. Whether you are United Methodist, whether this is your first time walking into a Methodist church, whether this is your first time walking into a church, whether this morning you have belief or whether you have doubt, no matter what, you are welcome at this table. Let us pray. Almighty God, I want to begin here by saying thank you for Christ who shows us his glory, who shows us his love in all things. I want to thank you this morning for Nick. I want to thank you for his faithfulness to you, for his commitment to you, for his willingness to stand up and to say, this matters, and I want my kids to see this, and I, I, want, to be, I want to be baptized. I want to please you, Lord. Gracious God, we thank you for Christ who has prepared this table for us, who has brought us to this table, who has brought us to this place as the family of God, and thank you for the sacrifice that he has made that we can experience it. We ask for your Holy Spirit on this bread, on this juice. Fill them with your provenient grace that they may enter into all in bringing the peace and strength of Christ. We pray for these kids and for these families that they'll know your love and they'll know your peace and hope. And gracious God, continue to connect us and unite us to one another so that even when the storms rage, we can see you in one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As our stewards come forward, on that night, he took the bread. He broke the bread and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
When the supper was over, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood. We are family. And there is nothing in the world that can separate this blood and the family that we are. Let us pray. Gracious God, we confess our sins. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. And we come to you asking you to pour into us so that we might love better, so that we might be better, more faithful and more like Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. One of the things I love about us right now is this plan to, for families to take communion together. Moms and dads, grandparents, there is nothing more meaningful than you taking communion as a family and coming together to celebrate our Lord's Supper. There's nothing more powerful, nothing more wonderful, and it is my prayer every week that is when you get in the car to go home, your kids ask you hard questions about what you've done and ask you to explain it. And if you can explain it, if you can't, I hope that you'll call us and so that we can talk more about it, so that it can help you grow in your faith and help you disciple your family as well. Come to the Lord's table. could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide. You. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Because you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. 
Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Praise the I swear it was 11 minutes when I preached it the last time. <laughs> may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your face. May the rains fall softly upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hands. God bless, guys. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah, and I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah.